Welcome. In today's Left Brain lesson, we are going to be learning the amazing powers of operators in Python. So we're going to start with the traditional arithmetic operators, a lot of the ones that you're already familiar with from your math class and from your math tutor, and then some gotchas. Then we're going to look at the comparison operators, which are the equality ones, greater than, less than, equal than. Then we're going to look at the assignment variables, a very important thing that we're actually already familiar with, whether we knew it or not. Next, we'll be looking at the identity operators to find out is or is not something what it says it is. And taking that a step further, afterwards, we'll look at the equality, which is similar, but a little bit different, and you'll see why. And then we're going to talk about membership, whether something is in a group or not in a group. And then finally, we'll look at logical operators. Let's start by talking about arithmetic operators. So pretty basic. The ones that you learned in math class, you're probably going to know. But let's just review them. So blackjack is going to be set to 21, Jackson to 5, and lottery to 0. So let's do some Q&A. What is blackjack plus Jackson? Correct. What is blackjack minus Jackson? Close. Mm-hmm. Yep, 16. Correct. What is blackjack divided by Jackson? Thank God I don't have to answer these. What is blackjack's times lottery? Yeah, zero, because anything times a lottery is zero. It's a losing proposition. Ooh, not defined. What are you missing here? Jabba black. Hmm, that would make sense. Looks like I didn't spell it right. That's going to raise it to the power, so everything that uses exponentiation, even if it's zero, ends up being one, because that's how exponentiation works. Makes sense. Okay, and finally, let's talk about why the square root looks so different. And that's because we don't have a built-in Python operator for it. I mean, we do. It's part of the library that comes with it, the math library. But we have to remember, it's not quite as easy as just using one of these operators. We have to actually bring in the module math, and then we have to call the method sqrt and put our variable in there. So we can still do it. It's not impossible, but just know it's a little bit of a different route. And I can understand that not everybody had the, the greatest math teacher. So, you know, maybe sometimes you had to learn a little bit more arithmetic from your tutor. So let's go over those. And just in case you need a refresher, the double whack, which is uh, kind of the urban tech dictionary version for a forward slash, a whack. It, blackjack whack whack Jackson is no remainder division, meaning we will end up with what? Four. Did you get that? So we have 21, we have 5, it's going to go into 21 four times evenly, and then we're going to have the remainder of 1, but we just throw that away, okay? So double whack division means we throw away the integer. Now, mod using, and it's hard to get your head around, but it's kind of like when you ride a bike, you never forget once you see it. Okay, so what do you think we're going to get when we use the modulo operator on the exact same problem? Blackjack, modulo, Jackson. Did you guess one? Well, maybe not, but I bet now you have a sense for it, right? Because the five is going to go into the 21 four times with a remainder of one. So it's like getting the remainder only. But just to sink this in a little bit more, it's interesting to think about what's going to happen. So let's try it again. 10 modulo one. Well, we know one's going to go into 10, 10 times, and nothing's going to be left over. So maybe we're going to get a remainder of zero, right? Nothing left. What about two? That goes into 10 evenly also. Do you think we'll get a, yep. What about three? Now we know three is only gonna go into 10 three, or yeah, three times, and we're gonna have a remainder of, hmm, okay, five goes in, yeah. All right, I can see it. Ooh, 10 goes into 10 just one time, no remainder, maybe zero? Correct. Uh-oh, now we're backwards. So now we have the bigger number on the right, so, or the denominator. And what do you think happens here? Because it can't even fit into it one time, let alone have a remainder. Ah, it just gets stuck at 10. Interesting. What if we go even higher? Do you think it's always 10 no matter what the number is on the other side? Yep. Those weren't really questions. I gave them away. But now let's look at some gotchas, because that's where things get tricky. All right, dividing any two integers will produce a float. So we talked about earlier how you want to save memory by using integers when possible. And if you're casting them and it's happening automatically it's called coercion so 9 divided by 3.0 an int and a floating number is going to give you a float but if you actually have two integers and you divide them you still end up with a float so that's another important thing is you can't actually keep integers even if you're doing perfect integer math it just 
does this by itself. So you would want to wrap this in the int function, and then it could take the answer and do that for you. Um, there's also a zero division error that we need to be really careful about. And, you know, this has definitely broken every one of your calculators in elementary school, but we get the same thing. And we're going to get this kind of an error, zero division error. At least we know what's going on when we see the error. But, you know, even Python's not powerful enough to divide by zero. And now let's look at some comparisons. Three is at less than 10. We're going to get a Boolean value returned, a true or a false. True, obviously. Okay, so here we are at the movie theater. You've all seen the pricing. It's terrible. It's $1.50 if you want a small popcorn, $3 for a medium, or $18 for a large. Set some variables and do some single comparisons. Is small less than large? True. Is small greater than large? False. Is small greater than or equal to large? 150 or 18? Nope. What about less than or equal to? False. Okay, so just look at the syntax there. If you want to do blank or equal to, use the symbol and then use the uh, equal sign right after it. Um, here's one gotcha warning is it can be really easy to just do that backwards. Like you put the equal sign first and then you use the greater than or less than operator and you will get a syntax error for that. So just a little reminder there to make sure to use the greater than or equal in the order that you would say it. Greater than or equal to blank. Okay, done with that. Let's look at multiple operators. So this is kind of where it becomes powerful, sort of more powerful than your regular calculator is. You can just start stringing this stuff together and making it more and more complex. So we can use the word and, and we're gonna learn a little bit more about that later, but is small less than medium and is medium less than large? That is true. Is small less than medium and is medium less than large? You tell me. True. Is small bigger than medium? And is medium less than large? False, right? Small is not bigger than medium. What about small being less than medium and medium being less than or equal to medium? Yes. Small equal to medium. Well, we haven't seen this yet, but double, you're going to see this is an equality operator. Um, and the double equals is saying, is it exactly equal to? So remember, the regular equal sign, that doesn't work. That's what gives us an assignment. So double equals is saying, is small exactly equal to medium? And is medium less than large? False. OK. I think you get the picture. Now let's look at a little bit of mixed up stuff, because we can do uh, some arithmetic operators right in the middle of these comparisons. So imagine small plus small plus small, that's $1.50 times 3. Is that going to be, once it's totaled, less than the medium of $3? And is the medium going to be less than the large? False, right? Because this totaled up to be more than $3, $1.50 times 3. What about when we throw the parentheses around it? Okay, so now we have small plus small, and then we're going to multiply it by small. Then is it going to be less than medium and less than large? Take a second. False. What about if we do is small less than medium or is small less than large? Or is a little bit different than the and, so we only need one of these to validate the true for the whole thing to be true. And, of course, it's true. So there you go. I'll give you a little overview of the way we can use the comparison operators. Now, probably the most powerful one that we've already used a lot, next up, is the assignment operator. We had to learn the basics of the assignment operator early on. We needed it just to work with variables, the equal sign. But there's a lot more to it than what we know. And there's also some great shorthand notation. And, in fact, the many things the assignment operator can do also mimic the story of my life. So I thought this would be a great time to tell you that story. Story of my life. First, I was a fetus. It's much weirder to say out loud than it was to write. And then after nine months, I was born. And in fact, actually I was born, I was zero, because that's more Pythonic. After nine months of being a fetus, I was born zero. And then I had my first birthday after 12 months of being alive. That's more like how Python would do it, so that's why I'm gonna do it. Then after 79 more years, I became a grandpa. So this new variable, Dylan, is assigned the old variable plus 79. The old variable is zero, so we're going to have a Dylan that is 79 years old. 
But then, I found an expensive lotion, and it took me back into my tweens. Now note the difference on this line, because instead of having to assign it to the old variable plus that variable, we can just squish the two together in this nice notation, and it's the equivalent of subtracting 65. There I am, 14 years old again. Awkward years, here I come. But then, after twice that amount of time, the multiplication, I found love at 28. Identity operators are really powerful, and I find them easy to understand in the terms of just simple English, okay? So we have is, right? Bip is equal to bippity, bop is equal to boppity. Bop is bip. It's kind of saying like, are these the same? Is bip equal to bop? False. What about bip being equal to bip? True. And what about if we use the is not? So it's just as simple as saying, is bip not equal to bop? Kind of. But in that term, in the syntax of is not, not in the way I said it. And you get a false and a true. All right. Well, there's cool ways to mix and match this, too. So we can say, you know, is 3.3 three. true? What do you think about this one? Is 3.3.0? Three, three oh? We know there are different types. False. Okay. So we know that even if they're the same number, if they're not the same type, it's not going to work out. What about true is true? Is that even valid? Okay. I guess that's true. What about true is false? Ooh, it's like a conundrum. False. Okay, true is false. I guess that would be false. What about false is false? Could that be true? Yep. Guess what? False is false. So, it's true. It's true that false is false. Two wrongs in this sense make a right. What about false? Just period. Okay, false. Has remembered, it didn't really need to return this. You know, like if we... You know, it returned false because it's actually something that returns a Boolean value because it turned out false. What about not false? Yeah. Oh, true. Okay. So there you go. True is true. True is false is wrong. False is false. That's the same. False, false. Not false, true. All right. Super, super simple right there. Easy to understand, huh? Might have to wrap your head around it for a minute, but that's how identity operators work. Let's talk equality. Everybody, we need to be more equal in this world, especially you stupid popcorn prices. Okay, so here's what we got something interesting to pay attention to, double equals. Now, the weird thing about double equals in programming is that it's not the same as equal. It's not an assignment, and it's much more like what you would think of as, a, as the normal equal sign if you weren't a programmer, like what you learned in school, like, is this equation equal to this other equation? That's what we're asking. But we use a double equal sign because there's also a way to write it like is not. It's kind of a more sharp way to have two of them so we can combine them with the exclamation point. So just kind of remember that it's going to feel a little unintuitive to use double equals for is it equal to and the regular equal to for like become this, the assignment operator. But just so I can show you how it works, small, we're asking is it equal to large, and we're going to get back a Boolean response of false. But if we ask, is small not equal to large, which we know it's not, we're going to get a true. And then just a little gotcha here is you don't actually get thrown a warning if you do it backwards, but it doesn't work. So it can be a place where a bug in your code comes. You see, it's like, yep, worked for me, but nothing really happened. Not in this sense. Not in the sense we're trying to use it for this Boolean response. Okay, so just make sure you always get it the right way. And it's similar to when we used the comparison operators. This piece has to go in front of the equal. Okay? And that's equality. Now let's talk about memberships. Obviously, everybody wants to be a member of a cool kid group. So what if 34 is not in the cool kid group? How do we check? Well, we can just say, is 34 in? And then we have this list here, which we'll talk more about in the next video. 34, 35, or 36. If the answer is yes, give me a true yes. Okay, and we can also do it with sentences. If the word good is in this sentence, this is a great example then give me a true, but it's not, so we get a false. How about this? What about if good is not in the sentence? This is a great example. Ill is not in this, so we'll probably get a true. So you think you can see how it works. 34 can also not be in a group, which is false because it is in the group. So I kind of give you a quick overview of how the membership operator of in or not in works. And last but not least, our good old Spock logical operator, one of my favorites, because it's right there. You know, it's just in your face. It's just, it's not going around the bush. It's just, boom, true, 
or false? Give me a yes or no answer, you know? Logical operators got things to do, places to go. So cat equals true, dog equals false. Cat or dog. So what we're saying here is true or false. Are either of them true? Yep, cat's true, so true. Here we're saying cat and dog. Are both of them true? Well, we know they're not. We know dog's false, so probably false. And here we can wrap it in a little bit of an if statement. Something else we're going to learn about more, but this is very cool because it gives us the power to say if true, then print high. And if false, well, don't print high, which is the equivalent of nothing. How about if not true? You might be getting a hang of this now, but you know, if something's not true, then it's false. So nothing happens. If something is not false, then it's true. So something happens. Okay, so we get the print of high. And just to close it out, here's a little bit of a way you can imagine putting things together to create some more kind of advanced functionality. Let's assign a and b both to the variable 5. And then let's ask this question. If a is equal to 5 and if b is equal to 5, then print, you know, we're both 5s. And they both are, so it's been printed. And we can also use it the other way. We can say if a is not 5, okay, which it is, so that one's going to come out false, or if b is equal to 5, I'm going to change that right now, and we're saying that this one's evaluating to true, so either this one or this one evaluates to true, this one's false, this one's true, then give us another print. Boom. One of us is not 5, which is also true. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.